Hi there, if you remember, in the previous video, we learned some high speed processing instructions. In this video, after a short review about general counters, I'll explain how high speed counters can be used, and then, I will use these three instructions to compare high speed counters with desired values. Finally, in the next video, I will use general counters to do a simple project with machine simulator software. Before we get started with today's video, I just wanted to inform you about all the great content we have been releasing on the PLC Goods YouTube channel, which includes industrial automation PLC programming, HMI, and microcontroller based developments. My name is Syed Reza, and if you enjoy this video, I would appreciate it if you could click the subscribe button as well as the notification bell, to receive the latest and the greatest content, I will be posting through the channel. Alright, let's start the video. In the previous video, we have learned some high speed processing instructions. In this video, we'll learn these instructions related to high speed counters. Before that, Let's review how to use general counters with these instructions, CNT and DCNT. Well, as I mentioned before, counters are started with the letter C and a number starting from zero. Now, if I enable this bit memory 10 times, then the first counter coil, C0, will be activated. If you remember, Inside the help window, the type of all counters can be identified. Well, let me select my PLC type, and then, here all available counters can be seen, which are divided into two groups. General, and high speed counters. The first group includes 16, and 32 bit counters, for general purposes. Note that, 16-bit counters, starting from C0 to C199, are up counters. They can be used only for counting up. 32-bit counters can count more events, and also can be used for counting up, and counting down. Remember, each 32-bit counter has a special memory, that determines to be an up, or down counter. As you know, to use 32-bit counters, we have to use DCNT instruction, instead of the CNT instruction. Well, as I mentioned before, 32-bit counters can be counted in two directions, and each of them uses a specific bit memory to determine the counting direction. For example the related special bit memory for this counter is M1200. Well, this bit memory determines the counting mode of the C200 counter. Note that, I've explained general counters during previous videos. Also, in the next video, I will use them to do a practical project using machine simulator software. Now, let's learn what high speed counters are. The first important point is that, high speed counter are 32 bits. So, we must use DCNT instruction to use them. Also, they can count in two directions, and divided to into groups. Software, and hardware high speed counters. Now, let me use a high speed counter inside the program like general counters. Now, let me use this user manual, to learn more detail related to high speed counters. It can be searched and found it on the internet. As you can see, according to this table, counters are 16, or 32 bits. Also they can be divided into general and high speed counters. This table tell us some other counters properties, like their count direction, and valid ranges. After the table, there's some simple example related to general counters. Note that, this and other programs in this user manual are written by WPLSoft, 
the older version of ISP Soft. But they can be rewritten in ISP Soft easily. Now, let's go to high speed counter section. As I mentioned before, there are two types of high speed counters provided, including software high speed counters and hardware high speed counters. This table displays some properties of software high speed counters. For example, this counter, C235 works based on the received signal from the first digital input, X0. Let me back to ISP Soft to tell you an important difference between general and high speed counters. Let me add a bit contact like this one. Note that, C235 only counts signal edges from the first digital input, X0. So, this contact only enables and disables my counter. Let me delete it, because I want the counter to be enabled for all time. But general counters work based on the logic state at their first input. For example, this general counter, counts signal edges received from the sixth digital input, X5. Similarly, C239 counter, counts signal edges received from the fifth digital input, X4. Well, these counters can count in two directions, that can be specified by these addresses. Also, these addresses determine that, counters must work based on rising, or falling edges of signals. Note that, these three counters use two digital inputs and work differently. Let me explain them after the next type of counters, hardware high speed counters. As you can see, hardware high speed counters work based on two or three digital inputs. For example, C243 is only up counter, which counts appeared signal edges at the first digital input. Its value can be reset by the second digital input. Or C250 counts received edges signals from the third digital input X2. It can count in both directions which can be determined by X3. Well, like the last column of the previous table, these counters use two inputs and count differently. This table displays how counters value in the last column, can be changed based on received signals from their two digital inputs. Note that, the stored number in D1022 is important, that it's 1, 2, 4, or another number. Note that, my PLC and other DVP series PLCs, have both software and hardware high speed counters. This table, display the maximum input frequency for each counter. For example, depending on my PLC type, these counters can count up to 10,000 signal edges per second. This frequency is enough to count signal edges that can be produced by most encoders. Note that, the maximum input frequency for software high speed counters will be decreased, if we use too many high speed counters, or enable external interruptions. However, hardware high speed counters will not be affected by other counters, interrupts, or other problems. Well, here is another useful point related to advantages and disadvantage of software and hardware high speed counters. The advantage of a software high speed counter is that, every value counted corresponds directly, whereas its disadvantage is it occupies a large amount of CPU space, causing the CPU to do less counting than expected. The advantage of a hardware high speed counter is that, it occupies only a small amount of CPU space, but its disadvantage is that, the value counted will only be updated, when the DCNT instruction is scanned. Now, let's write a simple program to learn how a software high speed counter can be used. First, let me use a software high speed counter, using DCNT instruction. Now, I want to use X2 to reset the counter value, and according to this table, I want to use X1 to change the state of this bit memory, M1235, to change the direction of counting. Now, I want to check the counter value. 
let me use DHSZ instruction. This instruction works such as the DZCP instruction that was explained before. Also, we can check the counter value with other comparisons instruction. But what's the main property of the use DHSZ? Note that, this instruction updates its outputs independent of the PLC scan cycle. Instead of that, if we use DZCP instruction, PLC will wait to execute all programs and interrupts, to finish the current scan cycle, and then updates its outputs. Now, let me download and test the program. Note that, this counter is sensitive to high frequency signals, but the produced signal by my switch, is a low frequency signal, probably with a little noise. So, when I change the first switch, the counter value will be increased more than one unit. However, as you can see, the DHSZ instruction turn on an output, Y0, Y1 or Y2, based on the counter value. Also, I can use the second digital input, to inverse the counting direction. Finally, based on my program, this push button can reset the counter value. Now, let me exit from the online mode, and use a hardware high-speed counter, C252, that uses three digital inputs. Well. Instead of DHSZ instruction, let me use these two instructions, which set and reset a bit address immediately, when the related high speed counter reaches a certain value. Now, let me download the program. Well, there are two errors inside my programs. I should enter the desired values, and then determine the counter number, for these instructions. Note that, this instruction, DHSCS, turn on the first digital output right after the counter value reaches 10, and DHSCR instruction reset it, when the counter value reaches 15. Now, let me download the program to test it. Remember, these three instructions update their outputs immediately. They won't wait until PLC finishes the scan cycle. Now, let's test the program. Note that, the selected counter, C252, is sensitive to appeared signal edges at the two first digital inputs, and if you don't change the default value on D1022, it will work based on this diagram. Also, I can reset the counter, with the fifth digital input, X4. Alright, another useful point is related to DHSCS instruction. It can be used to run an interrupt immediately, instead of turning on an output. Let me search the DHSCS instruction inside the user manual. Well. Here I can read the instruction description. These tables display which interrupts can be enabled by which software high speed counter. Similarly, we can use these tables for hardware high speed counters. For example, the used counter inside my program, C252, 
can run these interrupts using DHSCS instruction. Let me show you. At the output part, I write the desired interrupt name. Then, I create the interrupt beside the main program. Well, here are different high speed counter interrupts. Let me select this interrupt, I010, and then write a simple program inside it. For example, I want that this interrupt turn on the three first digital outputs. As you know, because of this interrupt, I need to use enable interrupt instruction, inside the main program. Now, let's download and test the program. At this time, if I use the two first digital input to increase the counter value, when its value reaches 10, the interrupt will turn on the three digital outputs immediately. Alright, I hope you have learned how high speed counters can be used. This is another useful document, that can be found on the Delta Group website. It can help us to learn what are interrupts and also how a high speed counter interrupt can be defined. As you see, this document has some simple examples according to both WPL soft, and ISP soft. Ok, I'll see you in the next video, to do a practical project using machine simulator software. Thanks for watching my content. If you have any question on this topic make sure you leave them in the comment section below, and if you can spend a few seconds of your time liking as well as sharing this video, if you enjoyed it, that will mean a lot to me. If you have any suggestions for the channel such as what kind of hardware or software I should be covering, then make sure to leave that in the comment section. See you next time. Bye bye.